Beta Ray Bill is a man between two worlds. Ever since his home world was destroyed, Asgard has been his only real home. But the Stormbreaker axe that Odin created for him was the only way for him to return back to his normal non-horse form. And yet when Thor broke that hammer, he found himself stuck forever as what he considers to be a big ugly monster. So in this series he has set out to find a way to reclaim the magic, to get a new weapon that can turn him back to his old self. Now to do this he initially thinks that he just needs to find Odin. And so issue two picks up with him on his ship infused with the AI known as Scuttlebutt. Please don't, don't ask. And he heads out to try to find Odin. Now, along the way, he picks up a hitchhiker. Someone stows away on board his spaceship. And it turns out to be someone who we know from the Thor movies, Scourge. You might remember him because he was played by Dr. McCoy from Star Trek. I'm sure that actor has a real name, but it doesn't matter. And the two of them find Odin on some backwoods planet in some bar randomly. It just so happens that the place that they go to is the place where Odin is. Now, Scourge knows that Odin happens to be here because Scourge is actually dead. He died a long time ago and has been in Valhalla, and he finds Valhalla boring. It's boring because there are no guns, and guns are his jam. So without guns, he asks if he can leave. He wants to go on one more great epic journey. And that epic journey is going to be with Bill to reclaim Bill's lost humanity-ish. Eh, so along with them, they find that Pip, the troll, is following them as well. Because Pip sees Bill as a kindred spirit. Pip is also a castaway, a throwaway type person within the Asgardian society. He's a troll. Nobody likes trolls in real life either. And so he wants to help Bill reclaim his goodness. And the, the main thrust of why Bill really needs to reclaim his main form really has less to do with the fact that his homeworld is gone and he needs this connection back to his old self that uh, he needs to reconnect with who he is and more with the fact that he wants to get romantic with Lady Sif and Lady Sif just doesn't like Bill in his horse form. She prefers him in his normal form. And so in order for Bill to get it on, he's got to find a way to change back. And that is really the thrust of this series. Now, the story is fine for the most part. When they find Odin, it turns out that Odin no longer has the magic and he sends them on their way. And I'm not going to spoil the rest of the story there. Um, you really need to buy the issue and read it for yourself if you want to find the rest of that. But some of the setups just feel a little too convenient. And some of the payoffs aren't really there to pay off. Um, it just kind of feels like a cheap way to get him to go on a journey. And the way the other characters jump on board this 
this trip uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense and it doesn't really feel earned. Um, and, and the way they figure things out just seems way too easy. But it is entertaining. It's fun. In, in the same way that Thor Ragnarok was a lot of fun, but in many ways the story was somewhat brainless and you had to kind of ignore some of those problems. If you can ignore some of the problems with this story, you'll find that it is very entertaining. The artwork, I think, will be the biggest hurdle for a lot of readers out there. Daniel Warren Johnson is both the writer and the artist. Although, to be fair, Mike Spicer is the color artist or colorist on this book. Um, but Johnson's style is very particular. He has a very indie comic style, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, for a lot of people used to a mainstream comic look, those used to buying Marvel or DC comics, his style does not seem to fit the standard superhero style of comic book. I think for a lot of readers who are used to that style of comic, they're going to find this a little too cartoony, stylized, maybe even a bit off-putting. But hopefully they can look past that because I do think he does a really good job at laying out expressions, at world building, making the characters look consistent. Even if there is a cartoony, you might even say it's a bit of a manga influence, it does a really good job of conveying the emotions and the action of what's going on. So I hope that those readers who might initially take a look at this and then dismiss it out of hand as just being something that they're not really looking for because it doesn't look like a standard comic book as they're used to, just stop and slow down and go ahead and give it a chance despite the artwork not being what you're used to. I think once you get past that initial discomfort, you'll find that you'll get used to it very quickly. As far as value goes, this comic is only $3.99, which puts it on the cheap side of the current comic book marketplace. It also has 24 pages of story. Plus, you have the recap page at the beginning and a letters page at the end. And as far as the story itself moving along, it moves quite a bit. It never seems to linger too much at one point or another. And while there are a couple two-page spreads, one of them is of the ship, which has a lot of detail and lots of things for you to examine as you pull it in close to your face and follow uh, Bill as he travels through the ship and look at all the neat little things going on. And the other one is of a giant space portal. And so there's not as much going on on that two-page spread, but overall, I feel like you're getting enough for your $4 in this day and age to make it worth your while. So overall, I think what we have here is a pretty good package as an issue goes. It's not too expensive. The story is well put together. It flows nicely. The artwork may take a little getting used to, but you'll get over it. There are a few things that seem a little cheap and easy, but you can look past that because the story is a lot of fun. And so I think there are enough net positives to offset any of the few and nitpicky negatives to make this a great issue. 
And considering that the first issue is pretty much the same as the second, as far as the story being good, the art being the same, the value being the same, that the proposition overall seems to be that this has the makings of a really good miniseries. So since this is only the second issue of the miniseries, I'd say this is one you probably want to jump on now. Go out, find a copy of the first issue, grab this second issue, and then get ready to grab the rest because this looks like it's going to be one of the good ones that you're going to want to ride along with for the rest of the story.